This is Algebra 1, Unit 8, Lesson 7, More Zero Product Law Work. Okay, so before we learn how to solve a quadratic equation, let's review. First thing we have to do is get the equation in standard form, which means ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Highest exponent first, descending order, and equal to 0. It has to look like this before you don't go to the next step. So the next step is to factor the polynomial completely. You can use your bubbles or your box, whichever one works best. Set each factor equal to zero, take each of your bubbles, set them equal to zero, and solve, and then you've got the equation. Okay, now all the ones we did uh, before have been already equal to zero. What we're going to look at today are the ones that are not equal to zero. So um, what we have to do is get them to be standard form. So let's take a look at the first couple of problems. All right, let me move this down. We have x squared minus 7x equals negative 10. Is this equal to 0? No, it is not. So to get it equal to 0, we have to add the 10. Now we have to move the 10 to the other side. Where does it go? It should go at the end because it's a constant. So it's x squared minus 7x plus 10 is equal to 0. Okay, now that's in the standard form. It's equal to 0. We can factor it. Make my box. If you can do it without the box, great. If you need to do the box, that's fine as well x and x gives me x squared. Now this is plus 10, which means the signs are going to be the same, but the middle term is negative. So that means this has to be negative, negative. Okay, what are the facts of the 10 that give you 7? It would be 2 and 5. So I'm going to put the 2 there, the 5 there. It doesn't matter which one you put where. Remember, it's going to be negative 2x, negative 5x to get this out to negative 7. So make your two bubbles, x minus 2, x minus 5 equals 0. Set each bubble equal to 0 and solve for x. Add the 2, you get x equals 2 is one solution, and x equals 5 is the other solution. So there we go. We've solved the equation uh, x squared minus 7x equals negative 10. Its zeros are going to be 2 and 5. Okay, same idea here. 2x squared equals 3x. First thing we have to do is get it in standard form equal to 0. So Keep your x squared positive if you can. So I'm going to move the 3x over to the other side. Okay, so I have 2x squared minus 3x equals 0. It's in order. All right, problem. Um, is this a box? No, it is not. It doesn't have the c term. Um, it only has the x squared and the x term. So this is actually going to be a GCF. So what we have to do is do the GCF. What is the GCF between these two terms? Well, the only thing they have in common is going to be x. So if I factor out the x, you get x times 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. So remember, your two factors, x equals 0, is going to be one of your factors and also going to be one of your solutions. The other solution is going to be 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. Solve this for x, add the 3. 2x is equal to 3, and then divide by 2, and you get x is equal to 3 over 2, or you can, multi you can make it a decimal of 1.5. So there are your two zeros for that one. Same process every time. All right, let's try a couple more comp little more complicated ones. x squared equals 9x minus 8. All right, the first thing we want to do is get this equal to 0. But if I move the x squared over here, that's going to make that negative x squared. Do I want to do that? You can do it, but it makes your life difficult. So if at all possible, keep your x squared positive. So instead of moving this over here, we're going to move both of these over here. So I'm going to minus the 9x, and I'm going to add the 8. So that gives me x squared minus 9x plus 8 equals 0. Okay, now it makes it easy to factor. Make our box. x squared, 8. We know this has to be x and x. Since this is plus, again, this is going to be the same sign, but it's minus in the middle, so it's got to be minus minus. So this has got to be 8 and 1. So that gives me negative 8x, negative 1x. So my factors are going to be x minus 8. x minus 1 is equal to 0. Set your factors equal to 0. And solve each one for x. So we're going to add 8 here. So x is going to equal 8 is one of my solutions, or zeros, or roots. Add 1 here. x is going to equal 1. Okay. Now, 
little challenge here. x times x minus 4 equals 5. This doesn't even look like a quadratic. So what are we going to have to do first? Well, first we're going to have to distribute. Remember, x times x is x squared, not 2x. And then x times negative 4 is negative 4x equals 5. Now it looks like a quadratic. It's got an x squared in it. But we have to get it equal to 0, so we've got to minus the 5 here. x squared minus 4x minus 5 equals 0. Okay, so now it's a quadratic. It's in descending order. It's equal to 0. Factor, factor, factor. x squared, negative 5, x and x. All right, the factors of 5, negative 5, that will add up to negative 4. Well, the only factors of 5 are 5 and 1, but to get them to be negative 4, which one would have to be negative? The 5 would have to be negative, and this would have to be plus. So this is going to be negative 5x plus 1x, and that will give me the negative 4. So this is x minus 5, x plus 1. Set each factor equal to 0. Add the 5 on this one, and you get x equals 5. Subtract the 1 on this one, you get x equals negative 1. So you can see it's the same process over and over again. What you need to do is to get the uh, quadratic in the standard form first and equal to 0 before you can factor it. All right, here's some little more complicated ones. We have 3x squared plus 48 equals 30x. All right, now we want this to be equal to 0, so we've got to move the 30x. So we're going to minus the 30x, but where does it go in this quadratic? Well, it's got to go in the middle between x squared and 48. So when we write this out, this is going to be 3x squared minus 30x plus 48 equals 0. Okay, now this is a large polynomial. It's got a bigger leading coefficient of 3. So is there a GCF that I can divide out and make my numbers smaller? Yes, all of these numbers divide by 3. So I'm going to divide everything by 3 first to make my life much, much easier. Don't forget to divide the 0 because you can't just divide half the equation x squared minus 10x, and 48 divided by 3 is 16. And then 0 divided by 3 is 0. Okay, now this is in the right form. It's equal to 0. Factor, factor, factor. x squared, 16, x and x. Um, again, the signs, this is plus and this is minus. The, with the plus being at the end, it's got to be the same sign, so it's got to be minus, minus. And the factors of 16 that give you 10 would be 8 and 2. Okay, 8 times 2 is 16. Negative 8 plus negative 2 is negative 10. So negative 8x, negative 2x. All right, so your factors are x minus 8. x minus 2 is equal to 0. Set each factor equal to 0. Don't skip this step. Solve for x. Add 8. You get x equals 8. Add 2. You get x equals 2. So there we go. Now, let's try this one. 3x squared minus 8x equals 11. Get it equal to 0. We have to subtract the 11. Okay. Now, can I divide by 3 on this one? No, I can't because 8 and 11 don't divide by 3, so I can't divide it out. So we have to factor it as is. This is one of the bigger polynomials, so we've got to make sure we use our box on this one. Be very careful of your signs. 3x squared, negative 11. Remember the extra step when this is bigger, you have to multiply these two together. Negative 33x squared. Okay, the factors of negative 33 that add up to be negative 8. Well, 33 is 11 times 3, so it would be 11x times 3x. To get it to be negative 8, it would have to be negative 11 and positive 3. So let me put these in here. Negative 11x, positive 3x. Okay, now we want to do our GCF of each row and column. Between 3x squared and 3x, my GCF is 3x. Between 3x squared and negative 11x, my GCF is going to be x. Okay, between negative 11x and negative 11, notice both these are, 11, are negative, so this is going to be negative 11 is going to be there, and then up and down here between 3x and negative 11 is going to be the only factor they have in common is plus 1. They only have a 1 in common. So your factors for this one is going to be 3x minus 11. x plus 1 is equal to 0. Set each factor equal to 0. And solve. 
All right, now this one's a little complicated. It's a bigger polynomial, so it's probably going to be a fraction answer. That's okay. 3x is equal to, we added the 11. 3x is equal to 11. Divide by 3. And x is equal to 11 thirds. 11 thirds is a repeating decimal, so we have to leave it as a fraction. Okay, and then subtract 1 x is equal to negative 1. So yes, you can have fraction answers. That's perfectly fine. Okay, this last one's a little bit of a challenge. We have x over 5 equals 3 over x plus 2. All right, what we want to do is we want to get this to be a quadratic. Well, technically, this is two fractions set equal to each other, is it not? How do you usually solve those? Well, you usually cross multiply. All right, so if I cross multiply here, I'm going to write my product down. It's going to be x times x plus 2. All right, that's my first product. Then my other cross product, put my equal sign between them, would be 5 times 3. All right, so that I can multiply out. x times x plus 2, you have to distribute, is x squared plus 2x equals 5 times 3 is 15. Okay, now that looks more like a quadratic. So now our next step, get it equal to 0. So we have to minus the 15. So that gives me x squared plus 2x minus 15 is equal to 0. Now we can factor it. All right. This is x squared. This is minus 15. This is x and x. Okay, and then the factors of 15, that'll give me 2. Well, 15 is 5 times 3, but to get my signs right, I need to be plus 2. So this would have to be plus 5 and minus 3. So that gives me 5x and minus 3x. When I do that, so my factors are going to be x plus 5 times x minus 3 is equal to 0. Set each factor equal to 0. And solve for x. So we have to minus the 5 on this one. So x is negative 5. Add the 3 on this one. x is going to equal 3. So there we have it. So you can solve any quadratic equation that is factorable by first getting it in standard form, highest exponent first, descending order, factor it, set each factor equal to zero, and solve. Okay, so that's what we have to do to solve quadratic equations.